Hey there, welcome to the 16th Easy jQuery tutorial part of easyprogramming.net. So far we've learned how to get data from web services in the past few tutorials, but that's not the only HTTP method that we can do. So this is the get method that we used in the last tutorial. There are others like post to create, put to update, and delete to delete. You may have heard of the uh, the acronym CRUD, C-R-U-D, which is short for create, read, update, and delete, which is uh, a way, way to understand how most APIs work. There are other HTTP methods, but I will not be covering those in this series. As you've already noticed, I moved away from JS Fiddle for this tutorial. The reason is because my setup is all local, so I set up a an Express.js app. Uh, it's an API uh, API endpoints for this tutorial where I can send it post, put, and delete information, and it'll delete and it'll in either post, put, or delete information in a MongoDB database. This part of the setup is not part of this tutorial. That's a little bit more advanced, which I do plan on doing in a, in a series of mean tutorials. So come back for that. So uh, be sure to subscribe for that. And the idea here is that the setup is not really important. The backend setup is not important. What's important is the front-end setup with our jQuery, which is if you learn how to do CRUD in jQuery here, you'll be able to do this in almost any API that accepts Gener uh, general uh, HTTP methods. So we'll show you how to do this uh, in this tutorial. So what I have in front of you is just a you know basic HTML page, uh, which is just a table, just like in the last tutorial. And the script.js is has uh, what I'm highlighting right now is uh, the AJAX method. What we did in the last tutorial, which is the AJAX method get URL. The only things that are different here is that I am getting a localhost URL instead of my easyprogramming.net. I'm sending the exact same test data. Everything else is the same except the the cells that I'm doing is is a little bit different because I'm using tutorials instead of uh, whatever I used la in the last tutorial. So this is all set up. This is uh, I encased this in a function, and I'm calling this function get tutorials on page load. So when I refresh this, I get this information. So this information is hosted in a, a local MongoDB database. And if you're wondering why I still have uh, cores enabled, and because technically, even though these are both local, I'm not running this JavaScript file, uh, this HTML file on a web server. It's not necessary. You can run. HTML, you can run uh, JavaScript just on your browser without without having to run any kind of special software. But to run the Express.js application on the back end, I need to just create a server, uh, run, a, run an Express server. So uh, technically, this host is localhost uh, port 3000, and this is nothing. That's why I need cores, because there's, there's still cross domains. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please ask. I'll, I'll be happy to clarify. So here we have our get set up. So let's create our post method. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy our method here. I'm also going to do this. Just there we go. Okay, this did this. So I'm going to add some lines, and I'm going to change a couple of things. So my post API uses the exact same URL. So instead of get, if you're sending it post data, it'll do something else. Instead of spitting out information, it'll get information. But I'll change this method to post. It doesn't matter, uppercase or lowercase, I'll just do post. The data type is the type that I'm expecting back. My API here spits up uh, JSON data, just like here. I, if you're wondering how, you know, why, why, why it displays it like this, is because I have a, a Chrome plugin. Uh, you can see the raw data or the parsed data, just for easier viewing. Uh, the data is what I'm going to change. And the rest of this, let's actually do this. So I won't need to loop through and create more tables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. I'll actually console log the, the data that we're getting. And then I'll also get tutorials. So I'll call this function again. The reason I'm doing this is because I want this list here to update and this function will update it. So it'll clear the HTML and then it'll get the information and then refresh the table. Uh, that's one way of doing this. There are there are plenty of other ways of doing this. Uh, but anyway, so this, this, this. Uh, I know for a fact which headers, which kind of information, uh, which kind of data my API is looking for. It's looking for four different kinds. And you'll notice them in the the headers here, the, the, the table headers. So I'll just write them up here. So we have tutorial number. I'll do one. Remember, you do this in JSON format. Title, 
we'll do first jQuery, uh, it'll be the second I guess, second jQuery tutorial. I guess I should change this to number two. Uh, the other I'm looking for is author, so I'll put my name. And the last thing I'm looking for is type. So it's gonna be jQuery. Uh, these values I specified in the in the backend in the Express app, so uh, I know exactly what that app is looking for. So this may not look like much, but I didn't close it properly. There we go. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, I had a, an extra parentheses here, probably from this. But anyway, you know, you live and learn. So I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna go back here. Now if I refresh this page, what will happen is that since this is not encased in any kind of um, action, this will, this will trigger as soon as the page loads. So it'll submit this information to my API and this page will refresh and it will have two rows. Every, everything works properly. So let's refresh and it didn't work. So if I look at my JavaScript console, it says unexpected token on line 39. Debugging is part of life. Don't need that there because the, yeah, because this is just a function. You don't need a, a, a semicolon after uh, curly braces. So now if I refresh this, oh, it did it twice. Um, and that's probably because of how this is set up because it's not being triggered. It probably refreshed twice. Now if I, get rid of this if I just comment it out refresh this there you go yeah so the so the just the page loaded twice but the information in my API was sent just once now if I go to my uh, API endpoint here which is just a basic get if I refresh you'll see that my second tutorial is here so now if I do you know another one third third tutorial but this time I'll do uh, you know mean now if I refresh this, there you go. For some reason, uh, the, this page is getting refreshed twice, probably because of how I have this set up. Yeah, so it's getting called here once and then called here once, which uh, which we can fix later. But for now, I'll just cut this off and I'll refresh, and there you go. So you have third tutorial mean. You can see that it's, it's actually taking input. Um, and I'll do this one last time. I'll do four. The tutorial number doesn't matter. It's just something that I'm uh, that I'm just doing. So fourth tutorial, and this time we'll do you know, Excel. So now, yeah, yeah, I'm actually gonna comment this out and then see if that fixes this. If I refresh this page now, there you go. Got a fourth one. So this is pretty simple, and you'll see that in my JavaScript console here that uh, since I'm console logging uh, the data that's being returned, it's returning the last. Thing that I've sent it and and that's what the API is designed to do once you post data it sends back what you just posted as confirmation so if you're validating information on your end uh, on the front end you can use this information uh, and you'll notice that Mongo adds a specific ID to it so this is you know just for for Mongo itself and no that's it that this is the the, the post method uh, come back to the next tutorial where I'll show you a really quick way of uh, updating uh, this information and uh, if we have time in a, in, a, in a later tutorial after we do delete I will update the HTML here and include some forms where you can input the data and uh, post with the click of a button update with the click of a button delete with the click of a button so so Ajax tutorials uh, have a little more ways to go um, so thanks for watching I hope this is clear uh, we did this piece today uh, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Also remember to visit easyprogramming.net for more tutorials. If you want to see a specific topic covered, please let me know. Uh, the next few tutorials will all be at Ajax, so come back for the rest of them. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.